There have been various treatments uh, studied at Northwestern University for uh, liver cancer. Uh, in particular, over the last 15 years or so, we have been studying radioembolization, which is the concept and the principle of a minimally embolic treatment injected into the liver tumor, uh, applying high dose radiation, killing the tumor. So this has been a work in progress for quite a while and we took quite a controlled sort of measure and a controlled methodology to study this treatment. We can now employ radioembolization across the whole spectrum, early, intermediate and advanced stage disease. We like to start getting the, the notion that segmental radioembolization, particularly with therosphere glass microspheres, high dose segmentally to the tumor with an ablative margin, can provide a curative intent therapy much like ablation or resection, surgical resection could as well. When you talk to patients about various treatment options that exist for liver cancer, they want to know several things. First and foremost is the safety. They want to know the quality of life. Uh, will they be in the hospital for a long time? Are there significant toxicities and side effects such as hair loss, pain, vomiting, uh, dehydration, things that really affect quality of life? And is it possible to have a treatment that's done on an outpatient basis? This is why Therosphere is particularly advantageous over our traditional treatment of chemoembolization. Patients come in, we treat them on the same day, and they get discharged on the same day. And the classic post-embolization syndrome is not something we see with Therosphere. Hence, they're able to go home, they can recover at home, fatigue is the biggest side effect, and as a result of that, this is a treatment that they gravitate towards. So the decision process for treating patients with cancer, in, in this specific instance of paddle carcinoma, really comes down to a multidisciplined group. It's important for uh, taking care of any patient, really, to get the efforts uh, and the best interests of all the physicians involved. So for hepatocellular carcinoma, we're talking about hepatologists, medical oncologists, and surgeons, often transplant surgeons. In 2017, we have recently completed enrollment of our 1,000th patient over the last 15 years. We're very proud of that milestone. Uh, we are now in the process of submitting these data for peer review, and the data are quite compelling and consistent with what we have been messaging over the last 10 years. That this treatment is better tolerated than others, it can be done on an outpatient basis, and patients will gravitate towards that. We have then learned uh, that we can treat patients earlier in the stage of disease. Um, and we've learned how to facilitate surgery, something called radiation lobectomy, where patients may have a solitary tumor, but they are not good candidates for surgical resection at that time because maybe the tumor is too close to the major vascular structures. We are able to treat in a lobar fashion, treat the tumor, move the tumor from major vascular vessels, atrophy the side we treat, and hypertrophy the contralateral side, and facilitate those patients having curative resection when they otherwise were not able to. The landmark study was designed about two years ago, and it really stemmed from the initial work that we had published in gastroenterology on assessing response and overall survival. What we decided to do is to isolate from our 1,000 patient population a clean cohort. And the clean cohort is a patient population that had only one tumor, so you don't have the confounding effect of multifocal disease. You have preserved liver function, so chalpu A or B7 and you have no extrahepatic metastases or portal vein thrombosis. Now what you are left with is a patient population that can be analyzed with very few confounders. From there, you select two clinically relevant landmarks, the six-month landmark and the 12-month landmark. So we applied those two landmarks, and using those two landmarks, we followed. And at each landmark, their response status is assessed, their liver function status is assessed, and their survival from the landmark is determined. And again, after blinded review by two radiologists, we were able to demonstrate that compared to patients with stable disease or progressive disease, patients from each landmark of six months or 12 months survive longer if they have a complete response or a partial response. And the clinical translation of this finding is that now at our center, and our message is, you should treat patients until you achieve a complete response or a partial response uh, as long as at each treatment they have preserved liver function. So one of the things that I think the landmark study provides for us is a framework, a process of, uh, of, uh, of a way that we can study the role of response in future randomized phase three clinical trials and then study response as a time dependent variable. This is really what we need to do. So again, we've done it at the uh, individual level here with, uh, with this clinical trial 
But now as more randomized phase threes are being published and studied, uh, and the results are being described sort of to the national and international community, I think that the landmark methodology now is something that people should implement. What we have demonstrated now, at least for radio embolization, is you have a target. And once you achieve at minimum a PR and hopefully a CR, then you are going to hopefully impart a survival benefit for that patient. It means that if you have a patient at follow-up that has only stable disease, that is insufficient. If the patient is doing well, the liver functions are maintained, you should continue to treat that patient until you reach the response state.